Mainland Television Regional News. I'm Graham O'Brien and in today's news, rules bite back, Honey's back in town, will Woody stay or will he go, and more. The National Grey Power Federation in further developments this week has accepted that the Nelson Branch Committee headed by Kevin Gardner is legal and that their decision to pull Neville Mayo's membership is in accordance with the rules of the association. It would seem that until the AGM takes place in a few months' time, that the locks now have no reason to be changed again. We asked Neville Mayo for his take on this latest development. OK, Neville, thanks for coming in this morning. I know you must be a busy man at this time and everything that's going on. Um, we've, just, we've just got you in today to, to hear your comments. Um, the National Federation, well, as, as I understand it, the National Federation has come down and they've played a, played a part in the affairs of the running of the Nelson Grey Power. Now, you have some disagreement with that and can we have your comments please? Certainly, thank you once again Graham, for the opportunity to explain the situation. Yes, um, from the outset um, Nelson Grey Power Association is an incorporated body, it's an independent autonomous organisation. Uh, the relationship it has with the New Zealand Grey Power Federation is one where we are one of 63 uh, associations that link back to the, the Federation. We pay capitation fees to them, helps them to run the office, helps them to represent the views of our membership at political level. They do not have any authority or role to play in the management of local affairs. The President of the Federation uh, on the 26th of January in a uh, email communication to me confirmed that uh, the Federation doesn't get involved in local matters and he said local affairs have to be sorted out locally. So it's come as some surprise to us that suddenly we've got the Federation uh, uh, taking, I think, a side with the, uh, with the rebel group of our management committee in terms of uh, a number of issues. Initially, of course, uh, one of the board members from the Federation came down and chaired a meeting that uh, resulted in my membership being terminated. Uh, they had tried to get me out as president originally, uh, failed in that quarter, so they decided to, uh, to get rid of me as a member of Grey Power. This was done, uh, I thought, quite cynically two days before our special general meeting where I was giving an overwhelming vote of support. Um, so they were involved in that meeting initially, which, which we were unhappy about. Uh, and then t to top it all off, this week, of course, they've... Uh, uh, started to what I call meddle in local affairs around issues about access to the, the Grey Power Office. So here we have a situation where the Federation has decided uh, to support uh, the, uh, the stance being ta taken by the opposition. Uh, they don't have any authority to do so. We've asked them for an explanation. A number of members I know have been in touch with the Federation's office in Auckland. Uh, we're still waiting their response. That, that's great, Neil, and that explains a lot of, of how things have been working. Um, I have been doing my own research, as we should do. Sure. And um, I've been looking at your rules and your amended rules, and what I see is that, um, and I've got them here, in, two th in uh, 2014 this year, um, you yourself and the, mem and the committee um, put in an amendment to those rules. Right. And these amended rules um, did state that the committee can... Um, pull the membership of any any member that's they're not in the best interest of the society. Correct, yeah. So, I mean, I'm a little bit um, dubious because it seems to be that you've been a victim of your own rules. I mean, these are very, these are very um, strong rules and you've actually given the committee that power to pull the, yeah. to pull the membership. And I know that you yourself have pulled the membership of a member before for, um, um, for actions not not in the best interest of the society, being yeah, yeah. Um, Councillor Ian Barker. Yeah. So, all I, I like to give you a fair go and all good play to you. Um, yeah. But the, the National Federation has seemed to have, has sided with the committee. Yep. Um, they do seem to have the power, and from what I understand, they've that all they've done is uh, made sure everything that was run according to the rules. Mm. So, how are your comments on that? Well, they happened, of course. Part of the reason, of course, we're in this uh, in the standoff with them is that they've basically seized power, Graham. That's what they've done, yeah. and so uh, you know, I mean, we, we've we've uh, tried to, in every step of the way, we've tried to stick to the constitution. They haven't. Um, do you believe that you've got the majority behind you in, in the Great Power? I think so. I mean, we had a special general meeting on the 29th of January, Graham, and we had uh, overwhelming support uh, for 90 
of the 160 odd people that attended that meeting, it was the biggest meeting of Nelson yep. Gray Power on record. We, we, we had 94% of them support my presidency. Yep. To, to, to get this sorted and, and to sort of get some kind of, kind of democratic, demo, democratic process in place, would you be open to um, getting your membership back so that you could at least stand for, for, pre, for um, president in the next annual general meeting? Yeah, if it, if it's... If it comes to that, would you, would you accept that, right, as long as you get your membership back and you can put your name, your name into the hat... You pull the majority. I mean, hey, it, it might not be the be it might not be the best system we got, but it's the one that we're yeah, working with. There's a special general meeting being held on the sixth of March, Graham, and there's a number of actions that are going to fo follow from that. Uh, you're right. The end the end intent, of course, is to have the member my membership restored, so that I can be a contender uh, for the presidency at the annual general meeting. Now. Um, there's a number of things that have to happen before we get to that point, but ideally that would be the, be the answer. I mean, one of the and issues... Then, then we can just, if we get that, we can wait till the annual general meeting. Everyone can just yeah. go about their business, get their supporters there. And that's we can, right. And we can, have a, we can have an annual general meeting that's not 168 people. We want, there's 10,000 members. We want... Yeah. 9,999 <laughs> there to show that what is the majority wouldn't of that, us. Wouldn't that be wonderful to, to have a turnout? Well, we'd have, have to, to open the Trafalgar Centre, would Probably we? would. <laughs> Can you arrange that, Graham? <laughs> um, yeah. Look, uh, no, I'd love to see uh, at, uh, at the coming special general meeting on the 6th of March, the Suburban Club on the, at 5.30. I'd love to see as many members that could attend that because that's another opportunity for them to have their say. The annual general meeting is, is right. I mean... As things stand at the present time, if there's no resolution to this, and I uh, remain uh, in the eyes of those uh, that have seized control of the organisation, a uh, persona non grata and no longer a member, well then of course I can't be considered yeah. for president. Yeah. So, I mean, I think the membership uh, want to see me continue in the, in the role to effect, effect the change, to, to follow the mandate they gave me two years ago. Uh, and it, it hopefully can be uh, sorted, as you've rightly suggested, at, at the annual general meeting. Um, well, I'm a great believer in process, and I'd like to just see the process done for the good of everybody. So, yeah. I mean, at the moment, the process says under the r amended rules that, that they can pull your membership. Yeah. I, th I don't think that's a very good rule was put in there. That's too much power in the hands of too few. Um, but let's just try to get, I think, get to the AGM yeah. and let's get the members there and, and sort it out. It's yeah, I think that's the best think, way possible. Uh, and, let, and let's hope that that's where it ends up, Graham. I think yeah. at the end of the day, the membership have that opportunity to make the decision, not just for my role, but for all the officers of the association, plus members of the management committee. Uh, that's At that point, uh, decisions can be made. And then hopefully we can look to... Uh, repair a lot of the damage that's been done in terms of the how Grey Power is seen as an organisation and, and, and get on with the job of, uh, of moving, uh, moving into a brighter future. Okay, Neil Mel, thank you very much for your comments and your time. Thank you once again, Grey. Yes. Cheers. So Grey Power members, make sure you get along to the AGM or give your vote by proxy so that whoever wins can claim a real majority and let's see the biggest Grey Power in New Zealand once again lead by the best example. Nelson Police would like to identify the man in this photograph taken in Richmond on Tuesday the 24th of February, as they believe he may be able to assist with an inquiry. Anyone who can provide any information as to the name of this person or his whereabouts should contact Nelson Police on 03 546 3840 and speak with Constable Bronwyn Ingalls or Detective Sergeant Ian Landridge. Information can also be given anonymously through Crime Stoppers 0800 555 111. The Winery Tour featuring top New Zealand musicians Don McGlashan, Dave Dobbin, Anika Moa and Supergroove has come to town this week and with it is the New Zealand Music Foundation which is the official charity of the Winery Tour 2015. Chrissy Small caught up with the well-known New Zealand musician Don McGlashan who is one of the trustees of the foundation to talk about this great cause. Don, can you tell us about the foundation? Sure, it's... Um it's sort of the, it's a New Zealand version of, of two things that are in other countries. There's, there's, in most other countries, uh, there's, there's a sort of one-stop shop um, where people can go for funding if they use music for good in the community. Like, you know, like if you want to take music into hospices and help people there, or take music into prisons, or work with disabled kids or something using music. Right. So most countries have got a place that those people can go for funding. Right. We never had it. 
And also most countries in the West anyway have got um, a place to go for musicians uh, that are in distress. So uh, if, um, if a musician that's sort of given a lot to the musical community sort of suddenly can't work, you know, because they've got sick or something like that, there's a, there's a, there's a funding body to help them. And because we're such a little country, we put those two things together. And this is an idea that happened about maybe three years ago. Okay, and so over that time, any idea of how, how much, um, how many funds have been collected and where it's all gone? Uh, it's, th there's been a lot, and there's been, a, there's been dozens of, uh, on, the, music, on the, the musicians in need side of it, there's been dozens of musicians helped. Mm. Um, it's all kind of, it's all, uh, it's all a bit secret because just for, um, uh, you know, um, it's better, it's better not to uh, sort of broadcast that sort of stuff. Sure. Um, but so it's a, a sensitive subject. Yeah, but a lot of we've we've been able to help a lot of people. Um, and in terms of um, in terms of um, all of the different uh, groups in the community that are, that are getting funding, um, there's been a lot. There's been a lot. I don't I don't know the figures, but it's been a hell of a lot. And it's been for me. You know, I'm I'm a working musician, so I'm I spend most of my time on the road. You know, like I'm on the winery tour now. Uh, um, so I don't get a chance to sort of see how many people there are out there doing um, music therapy with kids, you know, and, and, and as I say, taking, taking music into all these environments to help people. And it's been really fantastic for me to sort of see how many people are out there doing the good work. Yeah. Well, as we all know, music is, is the soul to all life. And, uh, you know, it's a, it sounds like a really good scheme. And obviously, um, it's one that people can actually donate to. Yeah. You, we're, we're going to have buckets out at the gig tonight, oh, I yeah. believe. Oh, yeah. Um, I mean, it's, it does capture people's imagination, and that's a really worthwhile thing. I mean, you can see that. Even though it didn't didn't work, didn't come off in the end. The Foo Fighters, this huge band, um, they decided to donate um, a, a, to give a concert in favour in in support of the Music Foundation, and they they had it all sorted out. It was and it sold out in five minutes. The Auckland Town Hall sold out in five minutes, and then they um, had a bus accident, or had a had a van accident. They couldn't um, they couldn't do it. But that that, that that sort of shows you how it how the Music Foundation and things like it can capture people's imagination. Sure. But, but so yeah, it's a great thing to give money to and uh, and we it's going from strength to strength at the moment. Oh that's great and of course you've got Neil Finn as a patron. Yep, yep. Foundation meetings are really fun because there's usually a lot of musicians around the around the table so yeah. yeah. So no jamming at the table? <laughs> no, well, not, not hitherto, but yeah, I'm sure we could. We normally, yeah, I mean, we all jam with each other outside yeah, there. That's right. Um, okay, so look, tonight there will be collectors at the concert. Yeah. If people can't make the concert, how can they donate? Um, uh, the, you can go online, New Zealand Music Foundation, go online, and you can become a friend of the foundation, um, uh, and that's a really good way to do it, and then you get information. And there's... There, um, they do some. They have some really cool ideas. It's Peter Dickens, who's the the CEO of it, um, he was um, uh, um, involved in, in similar areas in Britain. So we managed to pull him in. He's a real coup, actually, because he's very good, and he's got all sorts of ideas for um, um, for you know giveaways, gifts, schemes. You know, so if you if you if you go on the on the site and become a friend of the organisation, there's all sorts of cool things that'll happen. This is the first. This will be the first. On this on this winery tour in the South Island, so um, and we had we had a little break. We've had about four days off, four or five days off. So it's going really well. It's one of those it's one of those tours where everybody joins everybody else on stage. So um, we like Anika gets up uh, with Joel Mulholland and they do a beautiful set, including some of her new new material. She's made this fantastic new album, and um, I get up and join her for a song, and then. Supergroove hit the stage and later on Anika joins them for a song and then I join them for a song and then Joel joins them and plays guitar and most of Supergroove get up and join us at the end for, uh, um, for uh, some of our last songs so it's really fun. Oh it sounds fantastic. Um, look I'm sure it's a sellout for tomorrow night. I'm sure it's probably going to be a sellout for tonight yeah. um, and uh, I just well thanks for coming and uh, I'm going to be there tonight so I'll be enjoying the cool. music. Cool. I hope you enjoy it. Yeah thank you. This year's winery tour is on Thursday and Friday evenings this week and collectors for the Music Foundation will be present at both concerts, so keep a lookout for them, they will be in official Foundation t-shirts. Also for those fans of Don McGlashan, he told Chrissy that he is made available at this event. Hot Off The Press, his latest album, with some of the songs the winery tour audience will be hearing for the first time.
Drought continues around the whole region and Tasman District Council has announced this week that water restrictions will remain in place for at least another week in Tasman. Despite the recent rain, dry conditions continue across the district. Salt levels have increased in one of the main monitoring bores and TDC are keeping restrictions at their current levels to improve the flushing effect of what flows we have in the Waimea River. The task force will be reviewing the situation again next Tuesday, however dropping river levels have triggered the need for Nelson City Council to issue a warning, warning about possible water restrictions. While water levels in the Mai Tai Dam, Mai Tai and Roding rivers are currently adequate, those Nelson residents who take their water directly from streams and wells could be affected and Nelson City Council estimates that it could affect approximately 500 households. Monitoring is continuing. Woody Woodwoods, the man and carver who created an artist centre at the entrance to the Able Tasman in Marahau, which has been in operation for 18 years and become a hub for tourism both local and foreign. This week he announced that he had decided to make the move west, taking it all with him. However, after his announcement became public and the community has put in their two cents worth, his resolve for the quieter life has become harder than he expected. I went to find out more. Woody, we, we heard through the grapevine that you might be moving on. Um, you've been an icon here for, for 18 something years. Can you just tell us a bit about you know what's going on and, and how you're feeling? Yeah, yeah. Look, I got a lot of uh, I've been getting a bit of media coverage lately, and I've been getting a lot of response, and a lot of people really want me to stay here. And there's a lot of positive people around, which has made me a bit more positive. And uh, and I've uh, been uh, hearing back from the landlords that there might be a positive outcome. They might not be putting my lease up too much. So that's what I'm working on at the moment. So there's not there is a possibility that uh, I won't be heading west and that I might be staying here but I'm not going to promise that. And you, you pretty much set up down there, did you have your, before this change, did you have your heart sort of set on going down? Yeah, definitely had my heart set down there, I've been down there for three years, I've been working on the place and uh, putting places for all the different sculptures and uh, getting it organised and it's so beautiful and quiet down there but I might turn into a bit of a hermit down there and I'm a little bit worried about that, whereas up here uh, there's a bit more interaction, you know, and it's very easy to become a hermit on the west coast, I tell you. You know, sort of beautiful river, beautiful bush, and that's it. Life just goes quick. You've got a lot of stuff here. Is this all, all yours? Like you've got carvings, sculptures, the works, pottery. Do you do all of this, or you've made a bit of an artist retreat here? Yeah, I have made an artist retreat here. We've been here for uh, nearly 18 years now. And over those years we've had so many different artists from New Zealand and all over the world. And it's been a, a real melting pot and we've, uh, we've had a lot of people coming here giving us knowledge and they've taken knowledge away. Uh, all the sculptures and carvings here uh, belong to me. I've done uh, symposiums where I've uh, you know, provided funds to uh, do sculptures and things. And uh, so what I have here pretty much is like a museum. <laughs> Piece really, you know, like it's a one huge museum. It's got uh, some of the ancient sculptures of the myths and legends, and then some of the modern ways we do things. We have the artists here also uh, doing the work, so people often get the chance to have a look at how Jade's car, etc. Yeah, well, that sounds like you, you'll be really missed in the community, and then it'll be a big, it'll be a big hole. Oh well, yeah, I don't know. We'll uh, we'll see what the future brings in that area. Yeah, yeah. Hey Woody, thanks very much and I think I'll speak for everyone, we'd pretty much like you to stay, it's become a bit of an iconic here, everyone that comes here and looks at this, so it'd, it'd be good to see you stay I think. Good on you Graham, that sounds great, yeah, yeah, we'll see what happens. Honey is back in town but in reality he never actually left. I went down to talk to him about his latest internment. Honey, um, you appeared in court the other week, um, it's a bit of trouble again, you were supposed to be sent down to Christchurch uh, to serve that as two weeks. Tell us about what happened. Well, basically, I didn't get to Christchurch. I, I, I did my week, um, and um, the system itself still hasn't solved the problem. It's still not going to solve the problem the way things are. Basically, the judge is biased. Um, not only is the judge biased, but the whole system itself is a failure. And why should we bother to support a failing system? Well, that's true. We have to find an info, you know, we have to get over this somehow. I mean, what's going to solve it for you, honey? That's what everyone wants to know. The Nelson City Council taking the right step in the right direction and um, standing up or fronting up and admitting that they stuffed up. 
and in actual fact on the 12th, sorry, the 14th of um, January, I had a meeting with my lawyer, with uh, the CEO uh, of um, Nelson City Council. Uh, and the words that came out of her mouth were, yes, I am entitled to a public apology. So, let's see how long it takes before she has to, has to fall on her sword. So you were saying to the people of Nelson, if you get a public apology and that they can't go back, that they didn't really do it right the first time, that's all you're after? Well, not really. It's been four years, OK? They've got to take 100% accountability. Thanks very much for your time, Honey, and um, let's hope that it can work itself out soon. Let's hope. It's been four years. After the break, we'll bring you the latest weather update and some events and happenings coming up from around the region.